This is the MSI Claw. This is the latest portable gaming handle from MSI, and this is powered by Intel. Now, I have to tell you that I'm really excited to see this come out because AMD has really controlled the space and it was great to see something new from Intel and also from MSI in the portable PC gaming handheld space. Now we're gonna see how well it handles on its own, but also how well it stacks up against the ROG Ally. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the MSI Claw is one of the first Intel Core Ultra based portable PC gaming handhelds. This is powered by the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H. We've seen that processor handle gaming on a lot of thin lights like the Asus ZenBook Duo. So we've seen a lot of devices that can handle, but never in something this small and this compact. Now, the first thing you're gonna say is, well, it looks very similar to the ROG Ally. And when we put both of them next to each other, you can see the uh, the MSI Claw is actually slightly bigger. It's but a, but a bigger frame, even though both of them do have seven inch displays, 120 hertz there. It does have a bigger frame and also feels more comfortable in terms of the grip while gaming while the Ally feels a little bit on the smaller side, but still comfortable as well. I have to say though, uh, I do like the grip on the MSI Claw. Now, when we look at the design of the MSI Claw itself, uh, we've got larger D-pad, which is really great for games like Street Fighter VI, which I play quite a bit. And I have to say though, this is probably one of the coolest aspects are the thumbsticks, the way they react, and also just the uh, bounce back on them, really good. Probably one of the best thumbsticks I've seen on any portable gaming handheld device. Doesn't matter whether it's the Steam Deck, uh, the Legion Go, this thing really is solid. Now you've got, of course, your opposable thumbstick uh, layout. You do have your X, Y, B, A buttons, and then you've got your four buttons at the very top here. So you've of course, kind of got your uh, in-game buttons, and below that, the, below each of the sides, you do have uh, different buttons here. So on the left-hand side, that button brings up the MSI Center. Now the MSI C Center M can launch immediately when you open up Windows, and is the main hub for all your games and also all your game services, which is pretty nice. And you can do everything from here. Uh, on the other hand, on the right-hand side, you do have your quick settings menu, which gives you settings for things like your real-time monitoring, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, as well as the AI assistant and things like super battery, which helps you, of course, manage the system properly. Speaking of the battery, it's got a 53 uh, uh, watt hour battery, which is pretty good. And when you put it on the super battery settings, it actually lasts probably one of the longest I've seen in terms of a device while gaming. Now we flip the device at the back. We do see, of course, a nice layout where we have a lot of cooling in the back. And this is really important because I found that the MSI Claw was really solid in terms of cooling experience. Not saying the ROG Ally is bad at it it's just that the claw did a really good job at that especially with the super cool settings and then you've got of course remarkable buttons below that now when we look at the back of both devices you can see where the differences also extend there the claw is wider and then we open it up this is where you see the uh, expandability of the ROG Ally. The ROG Ally, you can go ahead and swap out the SSD if you want to. MSI Claw, it's not so easy. I'm sure it's possible, but just at first glance, you really can't find where the SSD is located. Something different, but they're all pretty easy to open in terms of just unscrewing the back and popping it up uh, to make those, that access there. Now, on the top side, we do have, of course, our trigger buttons. Uh, we do have volume rockers here on the MSI Claw. And then you can see it says True Gamer, US, one USB Type-C port, micro SD expansion, a power button that also doubles as a fingerprint sensor, which is actually pretty cool. So that's the layout there. And again, similar layout with the ROG Ally, except of course, next to the USB Type-C is of course, the external GPU port. So you can extend it, connect to an external GPU, which is something Asus really likes to showcase with the Ally. So you're going, okay, Thunder E, they are kind of similar, but there are some differences with the hardware. What about gaming performance? Because that's very, very important. And this is where we saw a 
couple of mixed results. Now, we know what the RG Ally can do, so you see that next to it as I talk about what the MSI Claw does. So in terms of benchmarks, we of course have some benchmark results here from uh, 3D Mark. Again, it's just kind of showing you what you can actually get from this device. I don't really care about benchmarks. I wanna see what real world scenarios actually do in terms of gaming. So let's start off with Street Fighter 6. Now, Street Fighter is a game I like to play quite a bit. And you can see the benchmarks here. It can go up to 60 frames a second, but there are some situations where you see some slowdowns and some stutterings, and it kind of bounces back up and down. And this is something you will find with a couple of games. And I think this is where, of course, the driver updates and also just uh, being able to fine tune this properly for this device is something that will come through. I'm not saying this is gonna happen to every game, but you just have to wait and see in terms of those updates to actually improve the experience. But overall, I was able to play Street Fighter 6 at 60 frames per second, similar to what you have on the ROG Ally, which is also roughly around 60 frames per second at the same settings. Then I moved over to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now Shadow of the Tomb Raider was where I probably saw the best performance from the MSI Claw. Now the Claw, I was able to get some really high benchmark performance, much higher than the ROG Ally, which is at around, around 60 frames. I was able to get uh, closer to 70. And while playing the game on the MSI Claw, I got much better performance overall, uh, really smooth gameplay, and I think it just worked better. Again, this is something that the system handled quite well. Now, another game I went ahead and played was Red Dead Redemption. Now, Red Dead Redemption 2 actually handles pretty well on the MSI Claw with some higher frame rates, especially in the settings. Now, some of you are gonna say, hey, Thunder E, you're not gaming in a crowded area. Look, I know, I'm just trying to just show you what it actually does. And you see it peaked at like about 71, 72 frames per second, came down, a bit higher than what you got off the ROG Ally. So again, some really solid performance there from the MSI Claw. Now, Cyberpunk 2077 is something that I just wanted to try and I did not get good results. I got a lot of frame jumps left and right, and I think that has to do with some driver updates that are needed for this specific system. And this also was the case with a game like Doom Eternal, which I play quite a bit. And on the ROG Ally, I could get 60 frames per second on Doom Eternal, no issues. On the MSI Claw, it just didn't want to load up. It couldn't load up, it didn't load up, I just couldn't turn it on. And I had that issue with, you know, uh, a couple of games there. So that is my only major beef with the MSI Claw is the driver updates. I know there are games that work well on the system, but some of the games I like to play, that was not the case. And I know once the improvements hit, you're gonna see better improvement here. Now, when it comes to temperatures, you can see the temperatures on screen while gaming. This system ran really cool. I like the way the ventilation system on the MSI Claw handled pretty good overall, didn't feel like it was burning my hands or anything below. Um, I also say the battery life, when putting it on a super battery, you're gonna get the best battery life I've seen on any, and I repeat, on any of the systems here. Now, when you put in performance mode, it's really gonna crank it up and you're gonna get that. The AI assistant will help you. Uh, I've seen it improve in terms of just balancing out, but again, I've only had this system for about three days. So the longer you use it, the AI, of course, assistant will learn how you actually game and manage those settings for you. I really like what MSI has brought to the table. I like some of the functionality here, and I think this is not an ROG Ally clone. Now, this, the system does start at 699 and goes all the way to 799. I did get the highest system with one terabyte of storage, but we do know the ROG Ally is running for a much cheaper price point. Starting at 399 and going all the way to 599. So the ROG Ally comes off as a better price deal, but the MSI Claw is very capable, very solid, and I can't wait to see some of the improvements here with this device. I think a lot of people will like it. I think a lot of people will see a uh, much better battery life, and I think that's probably its biggest key here. And once we get a lot of those driver updates uh, that we're waiting to see, I think we'll see some really huge improvements. But 
Right now, I think the edge still goes to the ROG Ally, but let me know what you think, guys. Do you like the MSI Claw, what it brings to the table with a bigger battery, better battery life, um, and also uh, some of the performance it brings, or are you gonna stick with the ROG Ally, which now is cheaper? Remember, it did start at a higher price, but the price point has dropped. I wanna hear your thoughts. Leave them down below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.